This Week at NASA. Three, two, main engine start, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II with the NPP satellite, blazing the way a new technology for climate research and weather forecasting. All the systems look strong, communications look strong. The nation's newest Earth observing satellite has begun its mission the National Polar Orbiting Operational Environmental Satellite System Preparatory Project, or NPP, was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, heralding a new era of climate change science and weather forecasting for the United States. I know we're going to have thousands of users around the world who are anxiously waiting to uh, use NPP data for more applications than I can even think of. Data from NPP will enable the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to continue issuing accurate forecasts and provide advance warning for severe weather. NPP will also extend critical long-term data sets that advance Earth system science and applications supported by NASA, NOAA, and other U.S. agencies. This mission in particular has been planned for several years. It evolved over time to include our partners, NOAA, so we're looking not only at weather, but at climate and at better modeling what's happening with our planet Earth. So I think all of this is just showing the robust nature of NASA. The mission will also test key technologies and instruments for use on the two joint polar satellite system missions. <laughs> Expedition 29 Soyuz Commander Anton Skotlarov, NASA Flight Engineer Dan Burbank, and Russian Flight Engineer Anatoly Ivanishin were in Moscow's Red Square to participate in traditional ceremonies prior to their November flight to the International Space Station. The trio laid flowers at the Kremlin Wall in tribute to iconic Russian officials buried there. What are the similarities and the differences between the shuttle and the Soyuz? The, to me, the, the Soyuz is like a sports car, where the shuttle is like a, uh, uh, an 18-wheeler. And, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to the ride uphill. That event followed a media Q&A outside the crew's training base at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, outside Moscow. Skoplarov, Burbank, and Ivanishin are scheduled to launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome to the ISS aboard the Soyuz TMA-22 spacecraft on November 14th, local Kazakh time. The latest in a series of tests of the Orion spacecraft saw an 18,000-pound model of the vehicle dropped into the Langley Research Center's Hydro Impact Basin. Testing began this summer to certify the Orion spacecraft for water landings. The vehicle will carry astronauts into space, providing emergency abort capability, sustaining the crew during space travel, and ensuring safe re-entry and landing. This new and improved digital topographic map of Earth is the most complete version ever produced. Known as the Global Digital Elevation Model, it was created from images collected by the Japanese Advanced Spaceborne Thermal Emission and Reflection Radiometer, or ASTER. It's one of five instruments on NASA's Terra satellite launched in 1999. Enhanced features include improved spatial resolution, increased horizontal and vertical accuracy, and more realistic coverage over bodies of water. The new version of the map provides civilian users with the highest resolution global topography data available and is available online to users everywhere at no cost. Here in Maryland, both at the Space Telescope Institute and Goddard, we have three Nobel Prize winners, the greatest telescope called the Hubble since Galileo invented the first one. And we know that great people and a great telescope produce great ideas. Three, two, one, one. At the Maryland Science Center in Baltimore, Maryland, a special ribbon cutting ceremony took place to unveil an exhibit on NASA's next great space observatory, the James Webb Telescope. The event was part of the Association of Science Technology Center's annual conference. So while Hubble made it possible for us to rewrite those science textbooks, uncovering a vast new area of knowledge, 
witnessing phenomena that have never been seen before. Webb will reveal even more from its vantage point one million miles above the Earth. Several dignitaries were on hand to mark the occasion, from Nobel Prize winners and political officials to senior NASA staff. NASA has always been that engine of economic growth and job creation. The Webb Telescope is just the latest and greatest example of that. Using state-of-the-art exhibits and multimedia resources, the Maryland Science Center is dedicated to presenting the latest in scientific discovery to the public. The Webb Telescope is a joint project between NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. And now, centerpieces. It's a delight for me to help unveil this impressive display. And with that, a special exhibit of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope kicked off at the Maryland Science Center in Baltimore. Well, Maryland is the home of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, the team that's leading the International uh, Science and Engineering Group that's building the James Webb Space Telescope. It's also home of the Space Telescope Science Institute, who's operating and running all the science for the Hubble Space Telescope, and will do the same great work for the James Webb Space Telescope. Standing several stories tall, the full-size mock-up gives visitors a preview Collected light of how NASA is looking to build on the success of the Hubble Space Telescope. This is great. This actually gives uh, everyone an idea of what's actually going to be out there in space. It's not necessarily, you know, going in and taking scoops of dust or moon rocks or stuff like that, but it's definitely exploration. Exploration that's inspiring not just the public, but the scientists who expect Webb to push our knowledge of the universe to new heights. We'll see inside dust clouds where stars are being born. We even have a chance to see the atmospheres of planets around other stars and see if they're a little bit like Earth. So there's so many things we hope to discover and how many, so many other things we haven't even thought of yet that just might turn up. Being a user of uh, Hubble with the Wide Field Camera 3, that's the best we can do until James Webb launches. And if I used it for 100 years, I wouldn't be able to do the kinds of investigations I would like to do with James Webb. A Webb telescope that will one day be hard at work, a million miles from Earth. Taking a break from its science mission flights, the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, came to NASA Ames Research Center to offer tours to employees and VIPs alike. The observatory consists of a 100-inch or 2.5-meter diameter telescope mounted inside a highly modified Boeing 747SP aircraft that can fly at altitudes up to 41,000 feet above sea level. For two days, the aircraft was opened up so that dignitaries, members of the media, NASA employees, and the general public could take self-guided tours of the aircraft. SOFIA is housed at NASA's Dryden Aircraft Operations Facility in Palmdale, California, and is a cooperative effort between NASA and DLR, the German Aerospace Agency. Welcome to NASA Wallops Flight Facility. NASA's Wallops Flight Facility hosted 48 social media guests in its first ever tweet up, an event designed to give NASA's social media followers an opportunity to visit and find out what Wallops is all about. We took the online engagement that we have with our fans and followers and made it an in-person engagement. And so we had a lottery and people could sign up, register to come to this event, and then 50 people were randomly selected to come and be here today. NASA shares what it's doing as widely as possible and social media is one of the ways NASA can engage with the public. People then will take what they're seeing and experiencing today and they'll share it on their social networks. So they're essentially taking along their followers for everything they experience today. You can find all the ways to follow NASA's social media and engage with us at nasa.gov connect. Much like the infinity of space, the mercury rocket-shaped corn maze appeared to go on forever at the Belvedere Plantation in Fredericksburg, Virginia. The space-themed maze and NASA exhibits turned the Virginia farm into an out-of-this-world experience for families and visitors. In addition to pumpkins, hay rides, slides, and pony rides, farm goers could visit NASA's Driven to Explore trailer, touch a moon rock, build a corn rocket, and play educational games about science and space. The outreach effort in an unexpected place got many people talking about NASA. Belvedere Plantation is one of seven farms across the United States taking part in a project called Space Farm 7. 
The project is a collaboration between NASA and members of a Utah-based company that helps farmers design and create mazes. This year, the organization decided to highlight NASA. For those visiting the farm recently, NASA's presence was a welcome surprise. We came here to pick some pumpkins, but um, learning about NASA was an uh, excited bo exciting bonus. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.